As you can see, our lab is equipped with instruments to help with their learning. We have a range of instruments from digital multimeters, spectrum analyzer, arbitrary waveform generators, and oscilloscope. So this lab is equipped enough to handle courses at undergraduate level sufficiently. Most of the experiments are able to do it here very well. Mugideta Bitha, a student at Soweto University, offering bachelors of, of engineering in electronics and computer engineering first year, second semester. Um, what I'm going to present, I'm going to talk about the instruments we use in the electronics laboratory and the, and the components we use to build circuits. Here we have, it is called a digital analog lab, uh, where there is uh, a board mounted, a breadboard mounted on it. It helps us to build electronic circuits and joins the and the breadboard is used for joining the components together when we are performing experiments in the lab. Here is the is the program member DC power supply. For it it helps us to pro, to provide DC supply to the to our to our experiments. It it can offer voltage or current, whatever you want. To, to, to provide to the to the to the to this experiment. Then this one is a, is a function arbitrary waveform generator. It is used for generating waveforms which are viewed on the on the oscillo, on the digital oscilloscope. The digital oscilloscope is used for just displaying signals. Uh, then in this container, we have some components we use for building electronic circuits. Here are resistors and they are of different sizes. A resistor is just used for, for resisting current. Then we have a potentiometer. Potentiometer is used for, 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 for varying volume in our radio. If like if the current, it, it has a resistance inside. If the current is much, like uh, if the current, if the resistance is increased in the potentiometer, the current is, is low, so the volume will be low. If the resistance is low, the current will be high, so the volume will be high in the, in the region. Then we have a regulator. We have a regulator. The regulator is used for regulating the amount of current which will pass in a, a certain component. If you have, like, now, like, if you've, you've supplied current from your power supply, which is, like, 32, uh, like, 5 amperes, yet your component needs 2 amperes, this one will help you to regulate that current so that the component you, uh, gets 2, two amperes. That is the regulator. That is the use of the regulator. Then we also have a transistor. The, the use of a transistor is to is to it acts as a switch and at the same time as an inverter. Yes, I am Bongo Joshua, a student of engineering. I'm doing bachelor's in engineering of in electronics and computer engineering in School of Engineering and Technology Sorot University. So, in front of me here, I'm having a simple demonstration of Kachov's law. Kachov's law is one of the laws that we use under electricity in physics. So, as you can see in front of me, I'm having different components. The resistor, the connecting wires, the voltage source, and the instrument that can help me to measure the voltage and current. So, as we know from Kachov's law, there are two laws. There is Kachov's voltage law and there is Kachov's current law. Kachov's voltage law says that the algebraic sum of voltage in a closed loop is zero. So, as you can see from here, you, in, in, this, in, this, in this simple demonstration, I'm having two loops. There's a first loop, second loop, and the third loop which covers the whole thing. And the Kachov's current law says 
that the algebraic sum of current entering a node is also equal to zero. So from here I also have my node which is connecting three resistors. That we call it an essential node. So if you look at this, if you want to know the algebraic sum of voltage in this in this loop. We need to connect this device, we call it a multimeter. It helps us to measure current, voltage, resistance, and other things that are involved in electronics. So, if you want to measure the voltage across the resistor, what we do, we, we put the two probes, these are probes, we put them from one side of the res resistor, and the other probe we put it on the other side of the res resistor. This we call it measuring ac across. In voltage, we measure across, and current, we measure through. So if we put it this way, we can see that there is some value in our multimeter. Then, that is for one resistor. Afterwards, we go and measure for the second resistor. In that same loop, we also measure for this resistor. We see that this resistor is also having some voltage. Then afterwards, we get these two voltages that we have measured from this resistor and this resistor. If we add them up, it will sum up to zero. That one is, that one is Kachov's voltage law. Then, for Kachov's current law, we do it differently. In voltage, we measure across. In current, we measure through. So, we would pick this re resistor and disconnect it. After disconnecting, we measure the current passing through the, this resistor up to this node. After that, we bring this resistor back to this node. Then, we measure the current also moving through this resistor towards the node. First, displace it, then we connect wires in between them. Then, we also look at the third resistor after taking this one back. We also measure the current passing from the resistor to the node. Afterwards, we add all those currents. If we add them, it must sum up, sum up to zero. That also proves the Kachov's current law. So simply that is all about Kachov's, Kachov's law. It's about Kachov's voltage law and Kachov's current law. As simple as that. This is virtually testing what you have designed without the actual physical implementation. So this was what I did just in a rush. It's a speed control for files. So it's speed control for speed one. So after designing a schematic, you have to develop a piece in or what you call the printed circuit board. So from the schematic, you come to this. This is the next step, as you can see. These are now the wires. On the PCB, you call them the press or tracks. So this is the PCB design for the schematic that I've just shown. So the design phase, this is the second phase. So after this design, you go to the third phase to do a 3D visualization, that is three dimension. This is how this is looking So this is the after basic. After finishing the design and the implementation, this is how it will look like. You can explain them. These are the relays, then these are the LEDs, Explain the different speeds for it. That's beautiful. That's what I wanted to show. So the three steps from conceiving the idea, drawing that is other schematic like this, then doing a PCB layout, this, then the 3D. This is how it will look like when it's printed or it's made.